Okay, take two. The last one cut off at 20 minutes and I didn't know. So now I can see the red dot flashing and if it goes off, that means wild cows do are done. You're out of breath, you're long-winded, whatever. Okay, so I left off by talking about um, the LID. The LID is a low iodine diet. It's not a no iodine diet, but a low iodine diet. And your thyroid cells, whether good or bad, feed off of iodine. When you have cancer, you don't want those things to grow. So they put you um, um, on a, a medicine called RAI, radioactive iodine. Again, lots of acronyms in the thyca world. Thyca means thyroid cancer. So what happens is you have to go on an LID before RAI. You have to strip your body of as much iodine as you can possibly do. Um, I don't know if I said this in the video before, but essentially, um, kind of like data from the Goonies, my favorite movie, um, it's a booby trap. When you strip your body of as much iodine as possible, then when they give you the little radioactive iodine and you ingest it, all of the thyroid cells that have been um, starving say, oh wow, iodine, they get to and they're like, oh, booby trap, kind of like that Raid commercial, Ray. Anyhow, okay, ADD. Jump back on track, Kel. So, um, for six weeks, I had to go on an LID to get my TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, up between 180 to 260. Um, so, you can either go off your medication, your Synthroid, which was not an option for me by choice, um, because it took too long to get you on the correct dose. Kind of like any kind of medicine you take, whether you take Adderall or you take pain medications or you take heart medications, you have to, with the doctor, find the dose that works best. And it took a, almost a year for me to even get the correct dose of Synthroid and then two months later I went into relapse. So I was not doing that. The other option is something called Thyrogen injections. And what that does is it helps boost up that TSH. I'm really not sure, it's been a couple of years, why your TSH has to be so high when you go on RAI. I think the higher the TSH, the more um, they they do a blood work called your thyrogen um, or your thyroglobulin. I call it little goblin. The higher your thyroglobulin is, that tells you something's wrong and you have cancer. So they want your thyroglobulin and your TSH to go high. That way they know every active cancer cell is awake and ready to go. So kind of pulls them all out of their hiding places, give them the RAI, and bam, they're dead. So. My only other option was something called thyrogen injections. So I was to have RAI on a Wednesday. Monday morning I went in and got a thyrogen injection in my left hip. Tuesday, 24 hours later, I went and got a thyrogen injection in my left hip. So right hip, left hip. And then Wednesday morning I went in for my RAI. Now, when I went in to have RAI, there was a iron, and I say a, a, an, an iron container about this big around. There's my palm, so... And inside of it was rubber, and inside of that was a glass vial with a lid. Um, I went straight to the hospital and went straight to nuclear medicine. Um, have some really cool pictures, but I don't have an editing software, so I can't insert them here. And um, the guy did a Geiger reading, which tells you your radiation levels. Um, some stuff I totally forgot since then. And um, he wrote that down. He came in in literally a hazmat suit, yellow, with yellow gloves, everything, and um, unscrewed this container, pulled out the glass vial with these tongs, poured it in a medicine cup, and said, don't take it till I leave the room. Um, he said, and when you take it, don't touch it. Just take the, the medicine cup like you do for NyQuil or Tylenol or whatever. Put it in your mouth. Put it down. Don't touch anything. I'll be right back. He left. He went and got the Geiger reading again, scanned me to make sure he could log what it is when I come back from a PET scan and said, now, did you drive? I told him, no. He said, great. You need to get in the back passenger seat of the car, go straight home and go, or what are you doing? And I said, I'm going home. He goes, fine. Go straight home and stay in isolation until we call you to come back for your PET scan. Now, you have three options when you are in radioactive iodine. Because you are radioactive, you can secrete, um, you can secrete the radiation through your pores, your blood, your sweat, your tears, sexual contact, um, fecal matter, just anything. So 
you can either go to a hotel, which I do not recommend. I think that's really sick. You are going to expose whoever's on the other side of this wall to radiation, whether they be a pregnant person, an old person, a young child, it doesn't matter. You need to do what's right. You could stay at the hospital, which for me was $5,000 a night, and my insurance did not cover it because here in the city of Louisville, Kentucky, it is not considered an it's considered an op an option, it, like a cosmetic surgery type thing. And plus, I wasn't paying five grand a night. So I came home. I have a pretty big living room. Again, I'm sorry that I am talking so fast. I'm just trying to get this all in here. Not a living room. I have a pretty good sized bedroom. I have high vaulted ceilings, pretty big, um, and a big bathroom that has a jacuzzi spa or jacuzzi tub as well as a shower. So what we did is we put a table in this corner. Um, that had all of my foods on it. <clears throat> they put, <clears throat> a t we put a table here with a microwave and another table that had a coffee pot. Now, the reason again you go on the LID is to strip your body of as much iodine as possible. Not all iodine because it's completely impossible to, to eat iodine. So, on the course of this, you have to stay on LID for the six weeks prior as well as the weeks or the days that you are on your RAI. So I was on for six, almost nine weeks. And in the course of that nine weeks, I lost 22, 25 pounds. So it's a really good diet. I mean, it's healthy. It's not anything bad for you. But um, in the beginning, I was told of everything that I could not have. I couldn't have this. I couldn't have that. I couldn't have this. And I was so defeated. I felt so defeated and was so frustrated. Like, just tell me what I can have. Stop telling me what I can't. Um, through the support groups, on Facebook, I was able to get a list from the thyca.org or thyca.niv.org, which was a um, page that showed me what I could have, which was great. Lay's potato chips, they use non-iodized salt. I could have Pepsi, but I couldn't have Coke, so many Pepsi products. I had um, like Michelina meals. I had to stay away from chocolate. You have to stay away from dairy, which wasn't a problem for me because I'm lactose intolerant. I did have to stay away from my soy milk and almond milk, so I had pretty much had no dairy. I could eat sherbet, but it was only a certain brand of sherbet because there's still salt in it. Um, so after spending 12 days in isolation, I was in my room. I had a cooler also in my tub. That way, if it leaked, it leaked in the bathtub, and I we. We constantly kept ice in it so I could have, you know, my pop in there, pop, coke, soda, whatever, coke, um, my juices, my water, and I had to get um, distilled water because it had no iodine in it. So that was, that was crazy. We had like 30 gallons of water that I used for the coffee pot and to make my crystallite, which was also low iodine um, salt. And after 12 days, was told to come in for a PET scan, and your PET scan is a scan that will, um, they do... An imaging to show if you still have cancer or for me that I had still cancer so I went through the first scan and I lit up like a, a Christmas tree it looked like I had lightning bugs in me so they said you need to go home and say um, you're not quite done yet um, so I went home for another six days and total I was in isolation locked in my room for 18 days I did <coughs> come out <coughs> sorry I'm starting to get a migraine from this light um, am I still even in here? I hope my head's not cut off. And I think my head made me cut off, so I'm going to slouch a little bit. Um, I did go out of my room. Um, my brother lived with me at the time. Um, when he was at work and when Joe was at work, and when anybody was home, they could bring me my meals. My brother would actually knock on the door and run down the stairs because he thought, like, he would ask me, is your pee glowing? No, your pee doesn't glow. It looks normal. It doesn't smell different. It doesn't look different. Um... And I, he's obsessed with the Ninja Turtles. Now, he's 33, so, he, you know, several years ago, but still, he's goofy as heck. Um, you do have to make precautions in your room. Like, I had to wear gloves if I touched any surface that somebody else was going to touch. Um, I couldn't hug anybody. Even after I was released from my PET scans, I still had to wait almost two months from the date that I took the RAI um, before I could hug somebody again because it... When you, when you take it orally, it is not like um, radiation where they do pinpoint radiation where they do to the brain or the breast or the stomach. It actually goes in your mouth and it goes throughout your entire body. So I couldn't touch anybody. I couldn't hug. I couldn't. And let me tell you, people and just humans in general thrive on human contact. And 
I'm a very lovable, I hug everybody, you know, I, I kiss everybody on the cheek, well, not everybody, but um, I wasn't able to do that. And we'd also had just adopted Donut. We'd only had him like a week or two before I started. So I couldn't love on my animals because it would transfer to them and it could make them extremely sick. Um, the RAI pill itself, or let me go back, the thyrogen injections that I had two of on Monday and Tuesday, they were four to $8,000 a shot. So that was eight to $16,000 depending on your insurance. Um, mine were uh, $4,000 shots, so that was $8,000 before insurance. And then the um, radioactive iodine is the size of a Tylenol, like a Tylenol gel cap, and it looked just like that, except it was white. Um, that, without insurance, is $48,000. Now, we didn't have to wind up paying for that because your insurance companies and your doctors or your hospitals or your imaging centers have a contract with your insurance company that say they promise to bill them within a certain amount of days. My insurance hospital plan is 180 days. The hospital did not bill them until like 182 or 183 days. So we completely lucked out. I owed zero dollars for my treatment. That included thyrogen shots, um, PET scans, RAI, any additional anything after that so I was extremely lucky and I know there's people out there that can't afford it and it just it breaks my heart so um, the precautions you have to take when you're on your RAI is you have to flush the toilet three times every time you go to the bathroom because you don't want it to linger you have to make sure the toilet seats down um you have to take showers at least three times a day because you are sweating and you want to wash it off um you have to change the, the sheets constantly um you have to wash your sheets separately and in between washing your sheets and someone else's clothes or even just washing my sheets and washing my own clothes i had to wash the sheets put them in the dryer, and then I had to run a full hot water, full supersized load of just bleach water before I could put my clothes in there. Afterwards, um, you have to completely clean everything that you've touched. Even if you have gloves, you have to clean off all the surfaces, and bleach doesn't necessarily get it. There is a certain cleaning solution that you can get online. I forgot the name of it. We were able to order that. Um, it's just a, it's a pain in the butt. The first day that I got home from the RAI, I didn't feel too bad. I was a little tired. And then the three days following, I felt like I had the flu. I had the worst migraine, which I suffered from migraines anyway, but it was insufferable. Every inch of my body hurt. It was awful. I didn't want to talk. Um, I had friends emailing me, calling me, texting me, messaging me on Facebook, Twitter. I didn't want to talk to anybody and I felt horrible and I wasn't trying to be mean, but I just, it hurt to open my eyes. Um... So after that, and I was okay, I didn't want to leave my room. I couldn't stand being in here when I was had to be in here, but then everything was over, and I was just like, I don't want to leave. I'm comfy. I'm up here. Nobody's messing with me. It's quiet. I don't have to deal with the um, cooking the dinner for everybody. I don't have to worry about cleaning. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about the litter box. I didn't have to worry about taking the dog out or feeding it. It was just, it was nice. And then I was like, oh, back to reality. But I was happy to be alive. So I do have a tattoo right here. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, I did record it earlier, and you couldn't see it very well. But it is a boxing glove. And the rope that usually ties boxing gloves together, um, I have used the thyroid symbol logo, which is teal, um, teal, pink, and purple. So it says, I fought like a girl. And I tend, or tend, I plan on going back and getting twice. The word twice or times two on there. <clears throat> that was the aftermath of the LID and RAI. Since then, I have been diagnosed, like I said earlier, with several medical conditions, and it's just exhausting. I feel like we can never get our heads above water. We have child support to pay, as you know. Bella doesn't live with us. Um, I do have two older children who have aged out of child support, so that's helped a little, but I still owe child support for Bella. We have child support for Lexi because our kids do not live with us, and that's hard on one income. I've tried to go back to work, and my doctors won't release me. I've applied for Social Security for everything that's wrong, and I'm not sick enough. Um, it's just 
one thing after another. Like I said, diverticulitis, celiacs, IBS. Um, I, I recently, um, as you know, I had my hands done. That had nothing to do with it. But was recently found out that I have another element called um, Chiari 1 malformation. And what it is, is the same, this hand is my spinal column, my thumb is my skull, and my two fingers are cerebral tonsils. Everyone has cerebral tonsils. I don't know why they're called tonsils, but typically they don't go any further than your skull. Your skull does not touch your spine. And mine have actually grown four and a half to five millimeters, or they're at four millimeters. Once they reach five, they actually recommend that you have to have the surgery. But mine have actually grown over my skull and down into my spinal column, and they are starting to block the flow of spinal fluid, which gives me horrible cerebral migraines, which are just god awful. Um, if you see my eyes twitching a lot, like I see in the, in the vlogs, and I'm always rubbing my neck. Um, one of the reasons I wear my sunglasses is because I notice when I edit the videos, I do this a lot and it looks really annoying, but, um, my vision is not very good. I do wear glasses, but I don't wear them all the time. Um, my vision is getting bad. I, I've got little black halos. There's some places that I can't see and with my last job, I know that I can go there and he's amazing. I'm just not sure how much he actually knows about Chiari. So... The Chiari surgery, they will actually take the base of your skull and they cut out a little doggy door and um, they remove your cerebral tonsils. However, it's not just as simple as that, not that that would be simple, but they cut out that doggy door. They go and they cut you from about where a girl would put her ponytail, not quite at this, this, the crown, but about two, three fingers below your crown, and they give you a zipper which goes from where your ponytail would go all the way down to the middle of your shoulder blades. And they open that up. They do not replace that skull flap that they remove because they essentially have to blast it away. And there's no way to put it back. That terrifies me. Number one it is brain surgery. I don't care what anybody says. It's brain surgery. Two, there's nothing to guard. The only thing that's protecting your brain from anything is is your skin. It's not that. It's not that thick. You know, I mean, God, I've got tons here because of the weight loss and weight gain I had, but that's scary. I mean, it, there are times when I'm in the car and I hit my head, you know, or, or I'm getting out of the car and I hit my head, but I can't go on roller coasters anymore. I also developed a heart condition. Um, one of the medications that I was put on because I also have a pituitary tumor they want to remove. And again, that's a brain surgery. You don't want that done either. So in the event I do have to have the cerebral tonsils removed for the Chiari, I may say go ahead and get this pituitary tumor out of there. But one of the medications I was on to prevent the tumor from growing um, gave me heart attacks. I had three heart attacks within a year. And some doctors say, oh, it's not a heart attack. It was just a heart, you know, rhythm you know, it just need to be put back in place. I was in the hospital for four days because of that. I, I had a heart attack. So I've had three heart attacks um, in one year. That was last year between um, February and April. Um, the pituitary tumor, um, the, the Chiari, and I just have so many medical issues that I just, some days go, just take me. Just take me. Why do I have to be like this? Why am I in so much pain? Um because of them removing my thyroid. I don't know if I said this in the last blog, but um, they nicked a parathyroid and that particular parathyroid that they nicked had to be removed and that particular parathyroid helped my body absorb calcium. So I have to take calcium. So any kind of food that had calcium in it, I would take, I would take Tums, but my body doesn't know how to absorb it properly. It turns it immediately into cal uh, kidney stones. And if anybody's ever had a kidney stone, you know they are painful. I tell people the five top worst pains in my entire life was the cerebral migraine, the kidney stones, this hand surgery, and childbirth in that order. And it was awful. Like I'd rather have a hundred more kids. I can't because I had fibroid tumors in my uterus and therefore I had to have a partial hysterectomy. Still have the ovaries just don't have the baby container. So 
I have had surgery after surgery after surgery after surgery. I feel like every year, last year, 